Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and look what we have going on today. This is the new CVA Cascade VH Varmint Rifle. You heard me right. This is brand new, 2024, just released in January. Here we are, we're at the last days of January and I've got one of these in my hands. I ordered one as soon as I seen them come out and I really am happy that I did. Now, we got this one here in 22 250 Remington caliber and I believe it was the last one they had in stock at the time. But there's a lot of things that we need to go over and look at, at on this new uh, Cascade. So let's get into it. I've made a few video clips that I'm gonna just link in here as we go. But one of the first things that I wanna talk about was the barrel. This particular barrel versus the old generation one Cascade is a little bit heavier. It's more like the barrel size on the Cascade XT, which You've seen the one I have in 6.5 PRC. That particular barrel is a number five barrel. So I did take a measurement and I'll put that right up here, but I took a measurement right here at the end of the barrel, right where my suppressor attaches. And that particular diameter, as you can see, is 0.850. So it's a little bit thicker out here on the end than a standard cascade. Gives you a little bit beefier barrel. So there's a lot of things that uh, they've made upgrades on on this particular gun that are really nice. As you can see, it comes in the real tree hillside camo, which is really great, but it's got this nice uh, textured uh, feel to it. So it's not um, just a slick stock. It's something that feels like it's very grippy. I really like that. You can see here, this is the cheek piece, the adjustable cheek piece. There's your adjustment knob so you can raise it and lower it for your different heights for your cheek weld. That gives you a good cheek weld if you're running something like this. You can see I've got a 50 millimeter vortex on here and uh, that really gives me a good lineup to uh, to get my eye really lined up whenever I pull it up to my face. The other thing they did was this one Cerakoted instead of just the graphite black like my Cascade XT, this one is in a smoked bronze Cerakote which I really like that color. I've had a lot of customers have me do their particular guns in that particular color, and they they really love it. It's a really popular color for everyone. As you can see, it really fits well with this particular camo pattern. Now, the other thing too is, and I'll go over it, but this 10 round magazine for varmint hunting is very handy. I'll link that in now. Now let's talk about magazine capacity on this new Cascade VH varmint rifle in 22250. I'm actually shooting, uh, I'm gonna start shooting these Varmint Express just to kind of get things started. Then I'm gonna go to a custom load. But this is a nice beefy double stack magazine here. And I was gonna show you that I've already loaded the thing up. As you can see, this thing holds 10 rounds of ammunition, which is great when it comes to varmint hunting. I mean, you know, you may not get 10 shots, but hey, you don't have to carry a pocket full of shells when you go to the, when you go out to uh, do a setup. You know, so that's a really good thing too. Got the scope mounted. We've got uh, we've got it bore sided. Uh, we're gonna go out to the range and do a little bit of uh, testing on this gun. So, hey, stick with me. On this new 2024 Cascade VH and 22-250, I wanted to just take a quick look and show you, you know, a little bit about the stock. We've got three bills here that I'm gonna slide in here and you can see that it's free floated nicely all the way back to the breech with three dollar bit three bills in itself. But so that's a good thing. But the stock is just a little bit flexible. So we're going to take it apart and take a look at the stock inside. All right, here we are back with the Cascade VH in twenty two two fifty. I've taken the action barrel off of it because I wanted to see what the stock was made up of. And as you can see, it's got a nice honeycomb pattern in here. The stock is fairly rigid, I can say that. It still has a little more flex than I like, uh, but as you can see, like we said earlier, it was floated all the way back to here. And so we didn't have a problem with that. So it looks like things are gonna be fine, even if you do set it on a, on a bipod and put a little pressure on it, I don't think we're gonna be in big trouble there. I think it's gonna be okay. Um, because it is held very securely here and here. I did test what this came out with from the factory. These were tested at um, 50 inch pounds, 
is what the uh, the two screws were set at. So just letting you know, um, I wanted to do a full review, take this thing apart, show you everything about it. And uh, so we'll go on to the next steps. All right, this new Cascade VH Varmint Rifle in 22250, as you can see right there, is uh, set up and I'm gonna test the trigger on it because it feels really good to me right where it's at, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and test it here. So I've got my, uh, my tester hooked up here. Let's see where it breaks at. All right. We're looking at right at two and a half pounds. That is a really good trigger. I like that. Let's test it one more time. Okay. Go ahead and get everything set. broke at about two and a quarter pounds. So right between two and a quarter and two and a half pounds, that's uh, looking really good. Now you can see some of the features that we just went over and the gun is really uh, something that is, a, in my opinion, a step up from where they started out. It's got uh, some features that, you know, the average consumer probably had written in about and told them and apparently they listened because uh, I really do like how this turned out, you know, so I actually took it to the range and we did some shooting with it and I was going to video all that for you guys, but it's a pretty dreary day here in January for, um, for doing that. So, uh, between the mist and the, and the rain that's off and on, I just decided to go ahead and do the shooting quickly without doing all the videoing in between. And I'll show you some of the results from that, but we started out shooting this. And this is your Hornaday Varmint Express. And I'm using a 55 grain load here for this. And this stuff shot really well out of this gun. I was shooting well under a minute of angle with this. No problem at all, right out of the box. So that's a definite uh, plus. Um, but what I really wanna do is load my own. Uh, I'm kind of big into reloading. So as you can see before me, I've got some H380 from Hodgson. I've got some NASA brass and I've got some Sierra 55 grain Blitz King am, uh, projectiles here. So that's actually what I loaded up. So I did a number of shots, a number of tests, and I got everything kind of on the paper and wrapped up the way I wanted to go with this and sighted in, but then I just switched over to see what kind of groups were gonna shoot best with some different loads that I came up with. And I'll post a picture of this, but I wanted to show you the target because uh, some of it's, it's pretty impressive for a gun of this caliber. I mean, for the price point, I don't think you're gonna be able to beat this. It's, uh, it's pretty nice here. So I'm gonna put this up so you can see it a little bit better. I'm holding it back here right now, but I'll put a picture of it up so you can see it. But the first thing we did was we shot a load of H380 with 39 grains of H380 with the 55 grain Blitz Kings. And this is my group here. That's a five shot group and that's measuring 0.814 inches, so well under MOA, and this is at 100, of course. Then we switched over to my 39.5 grain. My Nosler book told me that 39.5 was gonna be the most accurate load they tested in their book in the gun that they used, and so I wanted to try it. So we did 39.5 grains of H380 with the 55 grain Sierra, same way, we got a 0 0.760 group right here, another five shot group, okay? Now let's go to a load that uh, my buddy turned me on to. This is what he uses out of his Bagara 22250, and he does uh, real well with it. So I'm gonna show you this, but I'm gonna explain a little bit about it too. This happens to be 40 grains of H380, same bullet, set up everything the same. And I shot this group here. Now, however, this group, total five shot group was 1.238, but this is the best group that I shot. And the reason being is this one shot right here is an outlier. I pulled that shot as soon as I squeezed the trigger, I knew that one was off. Uh, so if I take that out of the group, really, this essentially is one hole. This is the first shot, the second shot, the third shot, and the fifth shot went through 
the, the whole of the second shot. So I'll post that so you can see it. I'll put it up here somewhere. That way you can take a look at it. But honestly, that is probably the group I'm gonna go with. Uh, that seems to work out real well for this gun. And guys, I'm gonna tell you something. This particular gun has really impressed me. A buddy of mine was here while I was doing this shooting and he was just amazed. He was like, man, I can't believe the groups that are coming out of just a factory gun like this. It's not, you know, anything custom. I was shooting this uh, Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor here. It's got a 30 cal end cap on it. So uh, that was all part of this testing as well. Uh, but I started that from the get go. So that's what I'm gonna use to hunt with anyway. So anyway, I've got all this set up and uh, I couldn't be more pleased. I mean, I tell you what, it's a, it's a gun that I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with. I mean, once I get uh, the finished load dialed in here and, uh, and make some adjustments, of course, like I said, I sighted in with this ammo, but I didn't make any adjustments when I shot these groups. And I was aiming, of course, at the center of these diamonds here in doing so. So all of them hit a little bit low left, you know, but I'll make those adjustments, no problem. Uh, they're all very consistent. And um, I'm pleased as punch, you know. So, guys, I really think you are going to be just tickled pink to have one of these in your hands. Um, you know, they make this particular caliber. And this is, like I said, it's the Cascade Varmint VH series. And so they make those in 204 Ruger, which is a, is a good round. Uh, 223, really popular. And I was debating on getting that particular round just because of the availability of ammo. Uh, 22, 250, and 243. And you say, well, why did you why did you settle on the 22, 250? Two reasons. One, I wanted a 22, 250 all my life, and I just kept talking myself out of it. I'm thinking, you know, I've got 243s, I've got other things. Why do I need a 22, 250? But honestly. I've wanted one. They're, they're just such a sweet little gun to have. And my buddy that I was telling you about has one in the Bagara series, the uh, B-14 uh, Wilderness Terrain, I believe. And I tell you what, after shooting that, knowing that this barrel is likely the same barrel that he's got on his gun because CVA is owned by Bagara and that's where this comes from. So I know that's got a Bagara barrel on it. It says made in Spain right on the side of it. And seeing the performance of his gun, and now shooting this gun, it's no doubt in my mind. I don't think we're getting second-rate barrels or anything like that on the CVA. I think they are top-rate Bagara barrels. Um, guys, I, I, like I said, I don't know if I can shoot much better than what uh, I'm shooting right here, uh, at least, you know, from my old eyes. So anyway, given that, guys, I think you're going to enjoy this. I think that uh, if you are on the fence about getting one of these, don't be, uh, don't hesitate. Um, I wouldn't wait because like I said, these are, these sold out real quick. When I saw the announcement come out just before SHOT Show, uh, I only waited three days and whenever I placed my order, I got the last one in my caliber. So by the time I placed my order, they were already sold out of uh, 204s, 223s. I got the last 22, 250 and they still have 243s in stock. I don't think you're gonna get hurt on any of those calibers. I think they're all gonna be great. And um, like I said, I know the availability of ammo on the 223 was a lot better than this, but I've always wanted the 22 250 and well, now I've got it and I don't regret getting it, not at all. Um, I know my ammo is gonna be a little more expensive. I'm gonna do a lot of hand loading for it, but hey guys, I'm just gonna enjoy it while I have it. You know what I mean? And uh, just um, just thankful that I did get one. Guys, if you like what I'm doing here, hit the like button, ring the bell, subscribe, do all that stuff because, you know, this is probably your first look hands-on at one of these. Hopefully I did the review good. Hopefully you saw everything you need to see. I try to be as thorough as I can. I don't go through all this unboxing uh, scenario like uh, I see sometimes. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but I just find that a little bit boring. The only, by the way, the only thing in the box other than this gun is this uh, thread protector, which actually comes on the gun. I just took it off for this reason. But 
regardless, um, nothing wrong with unboxing. I just don't uh, feel like you're here for that. I feel like you're here for the meat and potatoes. Hopefully I brought you some meat and potatoes. And if you're at all in question about buying one of these guns, do not hesitate to drop some comments, ask some questions. You know, hey, if I didn't cover something, ask me. I will, uh, I will let you know because, you know, it, this is just something that I'm pretty excited about. And I think you will be too. So, hey, like I said, if you like what I'm doing, stick with me. Hit the like button, subscribe, do all that. Hopefully I'm bringing you good content. And thanks, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Till next time, good to see you.